On the way this half hour, more and more of us are spending time in the kitchen and out around the grill. We'll get some tips from one of the biggest and one of the best in the business. Also, there's big activities going on with UT Agriculture's 4-H Club. We'll have details on that in a moment. And what about the financial aspect of CB&L, owners of Hamilton Place and Northgate Mall, among others? We'll also have a chat with Chris Hopkins from Barnett and Company. All of that and more on the way this half hour on Let's Chat. Welcome to Let's Chat, the Tennessee Valley's premier show focusing on lifestyle and entertainment with Jess Raby and Chip Chapman, bringing you smart shopping tips, community events, and the newest trends. Now, Let's Chat. A moment ago, more and more of us, as we get into summertime, are spending more and more time cooking with family, maybe in the kitchen or out around the grill. And we're going to give you some tips on how to do both and make it easy, family friendly, and very, very tasty. Joining us now is Jim Stansel with Bare Knuckles Barbecue. Big Jim, good morning. Good morning, Chip. How you doing? I'm doing very well, sir. Big Jim is not far from his uh, array of grills and pits and, and things like that. If Jim's face is familiar, he's been with us here on News 12 several times. You've also probably seen him on Chopped, let's see, uh, American Grill, and let's see, Barbecue Pitmasters, and a few others. So Jim, I've seen you in action. You make it look so easy. What are some of your secrets? Uh, a lot of it, just repetitious. <laughs> Just a lot of it. A lot of me practice. Slung. You got to practice. You got to just you, keep doing it. How long have you been doing grilling, cooking for a living? Uh, probably twenty years or better. Wow. You know, so. And, and you you brought home a number of awards. Uh, you got one of those handy that you can show us. Yeah, let me see if I can put it up here. All right. I don't know if I can get it all on screen, but it's a. <laughs> and it's this a, is just one of the many awards that you right. have uh, taken home over the years. What was this particular award for? This was a reserve grand champion in Pensacola, Florida. This is a three foot tall pelican carved out of wow. a solid piece of cedar. So, One of the more unusual awards I think I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, you know, when you get out there running around these places, they have some unusual awards, but that was a pretty nice one. We keep, we keep it in the house. So. No doubt about it. All right, a little bit earlier we were talking about tacos. I mean, it's Tuesday. A lot of people do the Taco Tuesday thing. What is your secret for making a great taco? Um, fresh ingredients. Simple, fresh ingredients. Uh, most things you can get at any of your retail stores out there, just um, not complicated, just very fresh, uh, citrusy, bright, you know, um, nothing crazy. I, I, you know, I don't like to go to many ingredients. A good street taco is, uh, is really good. I mean, you know, um, skirt steak, a little tomatillo salsa, some pickled onions, some pickled jalapenos, a little cilantro, some lime. Boom! It's over. It's a wrap. What do you think the What do you think the one ingredient most people forget when they're doing tacos is? Um, I think they forget to um, toast their tortillas. They forget to grill the tortillas, um, and they forget to finish it with a little squeeze of lime. That's that that acid is usually what brings everything together. Mm-hmm. I have uh, been guilty of that myself in, in past years. You know, as good as a taco can be, there's that one thing that you don't think of until you're a couple of bites in, and by that time, it's almost over. All right, yeah, I'm, gonna put you on the, I'm gonna put you on the spot here. I have got right. a, a nice porterhouse steak. Now, you have talked for ages about the importance of properly seasoning the meat and letting it come to room temperature before you put it on the grill. And in doing so, basically salt and pepper is all you need if you're going to do a steak the conventional way. But I was going through my cabinet, and I have got no less than six different types of salt. <laughs> we have got, uh, I, don't laugh, we've got pink Himalayan sea salt, conventional table salt, coarse 
sea salt. Of course, you have to have kosher salt. And which one is best if you're just going to do a plain steak or maybe some burgers, and why? Um, I like the coarser, so sea salt or kosher salt is good, and the coarse version primarily because you it, it doesn't you don't have that density. You know, when you have table salt, which is an iodized salt, uh, which is right. something you would add to it after you know people just they hammer that thing with that salt. It's more dense. It's very fine, um, and it can tend to clump or it can tend to get too much in one little area. When you have a coarse or a granulated type larger cut, it tends right. to spread out a little bit more, um, and it gives you a more consistent base when you're putting these on your steaks or your burgers or your chops or anything you're grilling. All right, so you like the coarse salt, right? So I'm going to put right. a little bit of this on this particular steak. And what's one mistake that a lot of folks make when they are doing the salt before the steak hits the grill? Is not putting enough on? Yeah, I would say they don't generally put enough on. Um, people are, you know, they're heart conscious. They have blood pressure, you know, whatever. But they have to remember when they throw that thing on the grill, it smacks down. A lot of that stuff will come off in the cooking process. It also will melt down and when the heat hits it. So it seems like you're a little heavy handed, but you're not really. When you start to cook and flip and turn, a lot of that stuff will come off of there in general. It, it's, um, but you have to get your balance. You have to find the right rub, or if you make your rubs or put your rubs together, you'll find the right balance that you like for your flavor palette, and, and you can go from there. So um, you, right. you, I like to be a little heavy handed when I'm putting them together for the grill. All right. We're going to continue this discussion with Big Jim Stancil from Bare Knuckles Barbecue coming up here in just a moment as we continue on Let's Chat. 